Hey everyone, how you all doing, and welcome to my complete guide on efficient Zulra killing. In this guide I'm going to go into detail on how to maximize your kill speeds and thus maximize your profits from this boss. This guide has a lot of info aimed at a higher level audience, but it also includes basic information for those of you trying to get your first kill. So, Zulra is a level 725 aquatic snake found in Solandra, which is a town south of this Tyrus camp in the Elven Lands. In order to kill this boss, you do need to complete the Regicide quest in order to be able to access the area. Zulra is well known for being the most consistently profitable moneymaker in the game, and thus attracts a lot of people looking to make their fortune. Zulra can be daunting and frustrating at first, but with a little bit of practice and knowledge, you can be doing consistent sub 2 minute kills in no time. In order to kill Zulra effectively, you will need to use both ranged and magic attacks throughout the fight, so you will have to do a fair amount of gear switching mid-kill. Zulra has three different forms that use different mechanics and have different weaknesses. Regardless of its form, Zulra can spawn Snakelings and Venom Clouds. Snakelings are miniature versions of the boss that walk around on the ground in the shrine and can only use either magic or melee with a maximum hit of 15. Once a snakeling is spawned, it will only use one attack style or the other. They only have one hit point, making them very easy to kill without wasted time using rings of recoil. Venom clouds are inanimate green clouds capable of dealing significant damage. They hit in the range of 2 to 8 damage at a rate of once per tick or once per 0 6 seconds whenever you are standing on top of the cloud. Venom clouds are completely avoidable when killing the boss properly, but definitely complicate the fight. As I mentioned previously, Zulra has three possible forms. These are green, blue, and red. The green form is what the fight always begins on. In this form, Zulra is weakest to magic and can only attack with ranged. It will often spawn snakelings and venom clouds during this form, and when it is doing so, it won't be attacking your character at all. In the blue form, Zulra will switch randomly between magic and ranged attacks. It generally uses magic more often in this form, so protecting from magic is advised. It is weakest to range in this form, so this is when you use your ranged gear. The third form is the red form, where it uses melee attacks and is weakest to magic. In this form, it will sweep its tail forwards to wherever you were standing when it began its attack, and if you don't move out of the way, it will stun you for a few seconds and deal 20 plus damage. This attack is easily avoidable and doesn't need to be prayed against. There is one more form that you will encounter during most fights until you become fairly efficient at killing the boss. This is a secondary green form where the boss alternates between magic and ranged attacks once every single time it attacks. You can prayer switch the attacks and take no damage, but it can trip you up when you're new to the boss, and you definitely want to know when it's coming. It spawns in different locations and at different times depending on which rotation you're on, so we'll cover that later in the guide. Alright, so I'm going to move into uh, inventory and gear setups, and this one is the one that I would say most people w uh, start with. It's kind of a sort of a baseline, but in, in a way you can downgrade a lot of things as well, but I wouldn't really try to kill Zola with anything less than this. So uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm bringing only a four-way switch, so a pretty simple switch, and uh, you could downgrade even more if you wanted to to only like a two- or three-way switch if you really want to. Um, so basically I'm using Void, I'm taking advantage of the fact that you can share pieces of Void between different attack styles, and this isn't going to result in the highest possible kill speeds and the highest possible DPS. I'll show you guys the setup that I use uh, after this. Um, but this is a very effective setup that allows you to use a pretty small switch and still get you pretty fast kills. I was still getting kills in the, in the region of like 1 minute 20, sec 20 seconds even with this setup, so it's very, uh, it's very doable and it's very cheap as well. The Book of Darkness costs only a couple hundred K. You can definitely switch to Infinity Boots, I just didn't have them in my bank, so uh, pretty, pretend that these are Infinity Boots, they work just as well, it doesn't really matter that much. A Cult Necklace is less than a mil, all of the Void pieces cost nothing, they just take a bit of time to get. And you definitely don't need Elite Void also, you can use regular Void, it really makes no difference, just a prayer bonus. I don't have regular Void, I only have Elite Void. Uh, the Trident of the Swamp is like less than 2 mil, I believe, so and once again pretty cheap, and uh, you can definitely use a Glory if you don't have the money. Uh, definitely invest in a Blowpipe before uh, investing in pretty much anything else if you're very low on cash, because uh, a Blowpipe has a very significant increase in DPS over a Rune Crossbow. Um, but yeah, you can use a Rune Crossbow in like a Zami book or something if you really want to, but Blowpipe is definitely going to get you better DPS. So as far as items that you're going to need, regardless of your setup, you definitely want to bring potions. Uh, so your ranged potions or magic potions and your anti-venom. Um, if you are an Iron Man and you can't get anti-venoms yet, or you don't have the herbal level or something, um, I would just bring, I guess, antidotes or something else that cures poison. It's just that if you have other poison uh, curing potions besides anti-venoms, you will have to drink, I think, multiple doses every time you get poisoned or venomed, and it gets kind of annoying. Oh yeah, and also you definitely want to just st stick with Rings of Recoil when you're starting off with killing the boss. Don't bother trying to bring a ring switch because it'll just get very, way too complicated way too quickly. And uh, I have Zalandra Teleports, definitely get some of these. Uh, they are very cheap in the GE and they teleport you right near the boss. 
if you haven't killed the boss yet and you're an Iron Man, then I guess you'll just have to take a fairy ring or take the uh, boat to Port Tyrus or something like that, but you should get some Zalander Scrolls pretty quickly. Ring of Dueling to bank either at Clan Wars or Castle Wars. Uh, if you have a Desert Amulet for it, definitely take it, but if you don't, then just bank at Clan Wars and recharge your stats there. But what the Desert Amulet does is allows you to teleport to Narda and recharge your stats at the altar, and I do that between every kill, but if you don't have it, that would just go to Clan Wars after every kill. Or maybe you could try doing a few kills on a trip, but then you're going to have to bring prayer potions. And I take a rune pouch for vengeance. If you are new to the boss, I would recommend skipping out on vengeance for the first few kills because it makes things a little bit more complicated, and I would focus on just trying to learn the rotations, but if you are trying to uh, get better at the boss, I would definitely start using vengeance, and I'll show you guys uh, how exactly that works later in the guide. Alright, so next up, this is the high-level gear setup, and this is pretty much the gear setup that I used for the vast majority of my kills. This is what you should start trying to use after you've gotten used to Zola's rotations, and you can handle a larger switch. Um, if you are, if you already have a background in hybriding or something like that, you might want to start using a larger switch sooner, uh, if you can do that, but it took me a while to be able to build up to that. So, the only thing that's different in this setup from what I used is I used a Third Age Mage hat instead of a Healer hat. Healer hats, uh, Infinity hat, Aram's Hood, and Farseer Helm all have plus six magic bonus, so it doesn't really matter which one you use out of those, I just have a Healer hat in my bank, so I figured I'd pull that out. Um, the Third Age Mage hat has, has plus eight magic uh, offense, so it is two higher, but it costs about 37 mil, so don't really make that a priority, only if you have money sitting around, go ahead and buy one, but I already got my Zolar pet, so I sold it. And uh, other than that, I'm just wearing Max Mage, you notice I'm switching out for Arams. Arams and all that is higher DPS than wearing Void for Mage, because uh, Void is basically only best DPS for range, so uh, as far as the range setup, I am bringing just full Void and, you know, the Bagazins, the Fury, and I do bring a Ring Switch. Um, I'll talk about how Ring Switching works a bit later, uh, but basically you just need to use Recoils only when the Snakelings are attacking you with melee, uh, for the most part, and then I still have the same potions, the same uh, items down the bottom, and a lot less room for food, but once you get better at the boss, you can often do kills where you don't use food at all. It is RNG based, but sometimes you go like four or five kills in a row without using any food. All right, and this last setup is pretty much the newbiest setup I can think up. Um, so it is possible to get kills with this setup, and I'll show you guys later. I was successful in getting a few kills with this setup, but it's about at least two times as slow as using other setups. So I wouldn't really recommend trying to kill Zolra until you can get a setup like the last one, I sh or the maybe the last two I showed. I don't know the one with. Um, with just Mage Void and like a Book of Darkness and stuff like that. That'll get you very effective kills. This setup will not. As you can see, I've got the Ivan Staff, which doesn't deal very high DPS. As soon as you can get a Trident, definitely go for it. But this setup, I would say, basically is just for Iron Men that are first starting out with Silver that don't have possibly a Trident, don't have a Blowpipe, stuff like that. So bringing a four-way switch with the Rune Crossbow. Um, so I did take the Serpentine Helm, and that is to prevent Venom. So if you have a Serpentine Helm, you won't get Venomed. I meant to uh, take out a Ranging Potion instead of an Anti-Venom there, but... Yeah, switch this out for a uh, ranging potion. You actually don't need an anti venom when you're uh, wearing a serpentine helm. So, if you don't have a serpentine helm, like an, on an Iron Man or something, then uh, I, I guess you could wear like a Nezzy or something else like that. Um, or maybe bring a helm switch for mage and range. And uh, you will have to bring some anti venom or some anti poison or something like that. But yeah, this setup will get you effective kills. But even with max stats, I was getting like four minute kills. So, it's not really too great, but I figured I'd show it off. So, yeah, you bring the runes for the Ivan Blast and bring the Ring of Dueling. And. Showing Monkfish just for the true welfare status, um, but yeah, this definitely is possible as I'll show you guys later, but it's definitely not recommended. So what I'm going to do next is show you guys some sample kills and talk through exactly what I'm doing. In the description of this video will be a link to an Azola rotation map, which I recommend all of you guys to refer to if you're still learning the rotations. If you have it open alongside your client, it makes it much easier to kill the boss starting out. It's essentially a series of mini-map images showing the next place you should move to. I think that the rotation map is a far more effective way of learning the rotations than me commentating through each one, so instead of doing that I'm going to show you some sample kills and talk through the boss mechanics, your tactics, and the different strategies and techniques I've picked up over time. Alright, so a couple of things to keep in mind going into any uh, Zolar kill is that it'll always start off with the same form, it'll start off with a green form that spawns Venom Cloud, so you don't need to be uh, using overhead prayers starting off. Um, basically, w whenever it, the Zolara goes to a green form, um, if it doesn't start attacking you right away, it's not going to attack your character at all, so if it starts spawning Venom Clouds or Snakelings, then it's not going to attack you, but starting off before you've memorized what exactly it's going to do each time, I would start off by just praying range each time you see the green face come up to be safe, and if it doesn't attack you, then switch back to Magic Prayer. And you want to have your default prayer be Magic, and the reason for that is because it prevents damage from, on average, half of the Snakelings, since they have a 50-50 chance of either being a Mage Snakeling or a Melee Snakeling. Um, and the Snakelings can end up dealing you a lot of damage, so if you protect against a bunch of those, then it saves you a bunch of damage, and you're only getting hit by the melee ones. So, Mage Prayer should be your default, you should have Mage Prayer on whenever there are Snakelings out, and basically all the time, unless you're being attacked by ranged by the boss, 
when it's in a green form so when you're fighting it in the mage form you'll have mage prey on anyways so it makes it a little bit easier but yeah try to try to keep in mind that you should have your default prayer be prey magic all right so this first kill i'm going to show off is an east mage kill which is one of the four rotations and uh I'm using my mid-level setup. You always want to start off in this corner, the northeast corner of the map, when you're starting a fight. It'll always start with the range phase right here, or uh, sort of the range phase. It's really just spawning Venom Cloud, so you don't need to bother praying against it. You'll get in five Trident hits, and then and since it's an East Mage, I'm going to switch into my uh, range setup and start ranging the boss. Uh, you want to focus on switching first, since it's going to spawn Snakelings before it starts actually attacking your character. Um, but to be safe when you're starting off, you probably should just switch to Prey Mage as soon as the uh, Mage phase comes up. So... I made sure to have my recoil on so that uh, those two melee snakelings will get killed when they first hit me. And uh, as soon as I saw a ranged tech coming out of the boss, I switched to my vent or I put on my vengeance. And here it spawns a south uh, range form that will start ranging you right away. So you want to move to this square right here, right next to the pillar. Um, it will start sending out some venom clouds as you see right here. And as soon as the boss stops attacking me and sends out venom clouds, I do switch to my prey range, uh, prey mage, sorry, to prevent damage from that snakeling right there. And uh, Switching back into my ranged attacks, I'm going to continue killing the boss, and uh, I leave my mage prayer on, as you can see, since the boss is going to start hitting me, and uh, I did put up my vengeance as soon as I saw a ranged attack coming at me. That's basically what you want to do, ideally, with vengeance, is only put up your vengeance when you see a ranged attack coming at you, because otherwise the snakelings will, in many cases, just pop your vengeance, and it's kind of pointless. So it goes back to a melee, and you want to move over to this spot right here next to the pillar, the melee won't be able to actually hit you at all when you're standing this, next to this pillar for some reason, but it sends out some venom clouds so you don't want to be caught in those. And it is going to switch back to a green ranger form this time and it's going to go right into the ranged. So you want to continue uh, sending out your mage attacks and uh, make sure you get your prey range on as soon as it spawns. This next one is a green, but it actually doesn't uh, attack you at all. It just sends out snakelings and venom clouds, so you don't actually need to pray against it. But as soon as you see snakelings coming at you, you should put on your mage prayer again uh, because they will start hitting you, but there we go. Pretty clean kill for a timing of 148. Pretty A pretty standard kill right there, and uh, I'll commentate through a few others so you guys get a better feel of exactly what I'm doing. All right, so next I'm gonna show you guys a kill with the newbie setup, and uh, I mostly just wanna show you this because in with both of the other setups, I never really actually get to the form where it's alternating between mage and range, and that is an important thing to know how to do when you first uh, are starting off, because you probably will reach that quite a few times. Um, so with this setup, I'm definitely going to reach it because it's going to take a long time to get the kill. So as you can see, I'm still using the basic, the same basic strategy starting up. You stand in the square and attack the boss, and it's going to an East Ranger this time. So uh, this is a different form than last time, but you would just want to put on your main range pair as soon as you see that Green Ranger, and make sure to keep an eye on your rotation maps as you're going through the kill. And uh, as soon as you, you see it send out those white blobs, it's spawning uh, Snakelings, and you should switch to your Mage Prayer to protect from damage from those um, since the boss isn't hitting you anymore, and then for this phase you want to run over to this side and uh, it will start with a melee form that will start off with spawning venom clouds, so you just want to sit tight in the square until it's actually going to start attacking you with its uh, melee attack. So now, as you can see, it's turned towards you and it's targeting you, and uh, I dodged the uh, tail attack just as it was about to uh, hit me, and it hits for a second time, and now it's going to go back to the blue form, and I'm going to put on my range gear and start ranging the boss. Make sure to keep your mage prayer on. Right now I'm protecting damage against that snakeling and against the boss, which is very nice. And you want to generally start moving in this direction since the next form uh, you will be, want to be on the other side of the map. So this one's going to start ranging me, so I'm going to want to put on the range prayer immediately. And it uh, gets a bit annoying with Ivan Blast because uh, you, you have to switch to the autocast each time you switch weapons, which gets pretty annoying. But that's only for about three or four hits right there, and you want to switch back into your range gear. And... Uh, you want to stay in the square, as you can see right there, it used a ranged attack, and in that case you really can't prevent damage, and that's where the majority of the damage from this boss comes, and also just from the melee snakelings. And uh, you want to switch back to your mage gear, and uh, run back to this side of the, of the map. And we're going into a uh, green form, as you can see it's not going to deal any damage to me directly, because it started off by spawning venom clouds and snakelings. And uh, you want to leave on your mage prayer as long as possible, but this one is going to start attacking me with range. So in this case, I will have to take some damage from the mage snakelings, but it's better to take damage from them to t than to take damage from the boss. And with the recoils, they die pretty quickly anyway. So switching back into the uh, ranging setup, it's going to go right here. And after this one, it is going to go into uh, jad mode. So or jad mode, alternating green, whatever you want to call it. So you want to be ready uh, after this. Uh, Pretty much with a normal setup, you won't be able. You pretty much always kill it. With, like by the time you get to this point, but with this setup, it is going to take quite a bit longer. So you want to prepare yourself. It's going to start right here with a ranged attack, 
or sorry, no, it's going to start with a mage attack and switch to range attack. Sometimes it starts with range, sometimes it starts with mage. And as you can see, you just want to switch prayers every single time it attacks you. You want to make sure that you are switching prayers on the tick that is attacking you, not on the tick that the attack is hitting your character, uh, because it's all about when the monster casts the uh, attack that you want to be praying the right attack style. So not too difficult right there, but I just wanted to show that off, and uh, we'll speed through the rest of the kill and show you that it is, po it is possible to get kills with this setup, and I didn't even use that much food, it's just that... Is really really slow as you can see. Quick pro tip: you can bank your items uh, at the actual Zolandra area. There's a deposit box right there. So these next couple kills, I'm going to show with my max setup, and I'm going to commentate through not so much exactly what I'm doing in each each step, but more uh, w regarding to ring switches and vengeance. So as you can see, the fight still starts off exactly the same. Um, I misclicked a little bit there, but it doesn't really matter too much. So you can get in five trident hits on the first uh, form before it switches down to the next one, and uh, you always want to be ready to switch into uh, your ranged gear in case it goes to a mage, um, but in this case it went to a melee, so you want to do three trident hits right here. Uh, the first attack will always miss you when you're staying there for some reason, so do three trident hits and then move to this spot to avoid the second uh, uh, melee hit. And I'm always prevenged, keep that in mind, always prevenged before you start a kill. And as you can see right there, uh, I guess I wasn't prevenged, so that was a bit of a fail. So definitely prevenge, as you, it didn't really matter that much in that situation because it only hit three on me, but... It's always good to have a prevenge. Um, the way I do vengeance is I only I don't purposely let it hit me. Some people turn off their protection prayers to let the boss hit them to pop their vengeance. Um, I basically w uh, save vengeance for only when it's going to hit me with range, since it's going to hit you damage inevitably. And I try to focus more on uh, taking as little damage as possible while still getting in good DPS because I my basic goal with Solar is to use as little food as possible. So. That's how I do Vengeance, you can choose how you want to do it, but that's personally how I do it and how I've chosen to do it that I find works the best. So, with as far as rings right here, I'm using my DPS rings because the only snakeling that's hitting me is uh, hitting me with magic and I'm already praying magic. So, that's basically how you determine when you want to use your rings. Uh, you only want to put on your ring of recoil when you absolutely have to, uh, and that is when you have snakelings hitting you with melee. So, in this case, uh, once again, the snakeling is hitting me with mage, so I have my mage ring on because I'm protecting mage, and so I don't need the recoil. But now that it's spawning snakelings, I do switch into my ring of recoil, and that's because that one right there hit me a 15, so I have to make sure that it gets killed with the recoil. And I leave the ring of recoil on until all of the snakelings have spawned, and if I see that all of them are hitting me with mage, then I do switch back into my range ring, as you can see right there. And boss has killed, decent kill speed right there of uh, 152. And that's basically how it works. So I'm going to come through, through one more kill and talk a bit more about it. Alright, so this last kill is a West Ranger, and this is the uh, final rotation that you may encounter. So, fight always starts the same, so it's easy at the start. Just feel uh, positive about that. You always start the fight exactly the same, uh, so it's always nice in that uh, respect. Um, I believe in this kill I am prevenged. Make sure that you prevenge. I usually venge as I'm running up to the altar uh, in Narda. You can also just prevenge as you're running towards the boat, but there we go. It comes up with a melee for this form also, so the. The West Ranger and the South Ranger have the same exact start for the first three forms, and then they uh, switch to a different location of a Ranger, so you want to switch into your Mage Gear right here, and uh, you'll notice here that I am using the same tactic, you know, running between uh, blow pipe hits and pass my Venge, and be ready to Venge again if you see another Ranger come up, but don't bother Venging if it doesn't come up, because uh, you, you, if you Venge and the boss isn't about to hit you, then chances are your Venge will just get popped on a snakeling which makes it kind of pointless so right here it's spawning snakeling so I switch into my uh, ring of recoil in case any of them are using melee and that one right there did melee me so it's good that I had my recoil on there'll be one more snakeling that spawns up there to the north and it's gonna come at me and start using mage so now I can switch back to my range ring as you see me doing right there since all the snakelings are hitting me with mage and that's really the key to ring switches is just be ready with your recoil on whenever it's possibility that the uh, snakelings could be hitting you with melee so I get a few more hits in here. I usually switch back to my recoil as I'm running around to this corner. This is the only time where you have to take a little bit of venom damage when you're running around to this side. Um, so I make a bit of a tactical move right here and actually turn off my overhead prayers completely because the next form is going to be attacking me with ranged. And so regardless, all of the snakelings are going to be able to hit me. So it's easier if I get them killed before this phase or before this form starts. So that way I can have my uh, mage ring on for as long as possible. And this is kind of a extenuating circumstance, this doesn't happen too often, but I do take advantage of this once in a while, uh, trying to get all the snakelings killed since it's inevitable that they're going to hit damage on me either way if I'm going to be praying uh, ranged against the boss. So that's one thing that you can do, uh, as you can see right here, it hits me for a significant bit of damage and I 
get my recoil back on, and uh, I let myself sit on pretty low HP. I only eat when I have, I have to, but I recommend at the start saving up a little bit um, because you have a decent chance of dying if you're not paying close attention, but I still die at this boss. After this many kills, I still die uh, because I, I let myself get so low on HP, but I wouldn't exactly recommend it. Alright, so I'm going to show one more kill. This one is a West Ranger or Rotation 2 on the map. Um, so the reason I want to show this kill is just because it's the fastest one I got on video for this guide. Uh, it's like I think a 113. My personal best is 058, which I'm really happy that I got. I got I got the 058 with this exact same setup, just with the mage hat, which makes like zero difference. So um, a couple of other things I wanted to touch on quickly. I'm just going to let you guys watch through this if you want to uh, pay attention to exactly what's going on here. But mostly it's just because I got very high DPS overall. Uh, RNG was in my favor. So if you really want to go for speed kills, a couple of things you can do are use. Dark bow specs rather than blowpipe specs, and you can use a crossbow for certain uh, hits. So basically, for the last hit before a, any uh, mage phase goes down, you could use a crossbow hit instead of a blowpipe hit and get a bit higher damage because a crossbow can heal deal higher damage per hit. Um, and since the delay for a weapon occurs after you hit with that weapon, if you use it on the last hit that you possibly can for that form before it goes down, anyways, there be a fair there'll be a fair bit of time before you can hit the boss again anyways since you have to wait until it comes up in its next spot so you can do that if you want to i never really bothered to do that because it was just kind of a lot of extra effort for a very little difference um and the other thing dark bow specs are the highest d damage dealing spec for ranged um there's not really any good spec for mage and i use blowpipe specs just for the healing but if you really want to go for speed kills you can use dark bow specs um i never really tried that out but it would be interesting to see what kind of time you could get but yeah it is possible to get sub one minute kills even with this setup, just using kind of the normal stuff. So that is it for the information I'm going to give you guys today. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to link a video in the description and right here on screen to an unlisted video of just a whole bunch more kills, so you guys can just watch through it if you want to and just see more of me killing the boss if you want to just try to copy exactly what I do. Uh, I struggled a lot with making this guide really just because Zolra is so complex, there's so many different little intricacies to the boss and uh, it's hard to go through all of that with you guys because I wanted to cover everything that you can possibly do with the boss in this guide and I also didn't want to make it a million years long which it already kind of is and uh, I wanted it to be you know friendly to people who have never killed the boss before etc so if you have any more questions or confusions definitely leave them in the comment section below I definitely acknowledge that this guide is not perfect because it's just it's very difficult to uh, make a guide on Solar. I realized that while making it another thing I would definitely recommend is to uh, check out uh, the guide by Mr. Mammal. A lot of you guys have probably already seen it because it's, I think, the most viewed Solver guide out there. He he does a very good job of uh, covering the basics for newer players and stuff like that, so if you're confused still, then definitely check out his guide because he covers a lot of stuff that I may have missed, so uh, that's another thing you can do. So watch through more of my kills if you're still confused. Watch through his guide. Make sure you're keeping uh, up the solar rotation map until you have it all memorized, and I really do hope this guide helped you guys out, and uh, once again, Comments, questions, suggestions, definitely leave them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to annotate the guide as much as I can for anything that I missed and respond to all of your questions and comments. So, once again, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to drop a like if this guide helped you out, and I will see you all later.